Hi, welcome or welcome back to the Procrastinator podcast. My name is Jane, I'm your host, and um, welcome if you are new. And uh, today we're gonna be going through a few more of my projects. I think this is gonna be a fun episode because I filming the last episode kind of kicked me into high gear, so I ended up finishing a lot of um, projects. So yeah, I think this will be cool and fun. <laughs> Do you believe me? Okay, so um, let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you've been up to. Today is Thursday, February 15th. So um, I guess you'll see how long it takes me to edit and upload. But I think this one I should be able to get up relatively soon. Okay, so the first finished object I have to show are probably my longest whip until it became no longer a whip. Oh wow, that looks so good. It blocked out so well. So these are my Escher socks from Summer Lee Knits, Summer Lee Design. And wow, just like the lines look so smooth so good. These are supposed to be shorties, so really they should look more like this, but I don't wear shorty socks, even like normal socks I don't wear as shorties. So here it is. I finished both of them and they are so great. So awesome. I'll put them on the sock blocker for you, but I honestly don't think they need because they blocked out so well. So here it is. Looks really good, really crisp. Um, the color dominance, I ended up looking it up. It was a little unclear, so I kind of, yeah, I couldn't explain it to you, but I'll link the video I watched. It made a lot of sense when that person was talking about it, but I couldn't explain it back to you. And I, yeah, I also kind of just visually looked and I could tell if I had gotten the yarns flipped. So I would just unflip it if that happened. But I think for the most part, the color dominance is correct. Um, It is the white that is dominant, or the, the lighter blue that is the dominant color. So yeah, really, really happy with how these turned out. I wore them for a few days before I blocked them, so maybe that also helps help them block out really uh, nicely. But I'm just absolutely obsessed with how these look. I just think it's such, yeah, it's just really well done. I love this yarn as well. Um, I love working with it. I love the colors that were put together in the kit. Um, I think it's the Yarniverse kit. Uh, I don't, I, it's probably not available anymore, but yeah, this is just, I'm really, really happy with this. And toward the end, I didn't need to look at the chart anymore. Uh, which was really nice because I didn't think I would get to that point, but I did. Like, I did memorize the chart and I, like, understood it, like, conceptually, um, which is a really big plus because before I didn't understand it conceptually. So it only took me, like, half a year, right? But here it is. This is the Shadow Wrap Heel. I believe this is a two by one rib shadow wrap heel. I followed Earth Tone Girls um, tutorial and really easy to follow. And then the toe is um, maybe a wedge toe. I'm not sure what it's called. It's whatever is in the Crazy Sock Ladies vanilla sock pattern. And it looks like that. So it's, um, yeah, this is my favorite toe. It fits really well. Uh, the toes, the toe and heel of Summer Lee Knits um, designs, like, never, never work for me. Not never, I've tried it once. It did not work for me. I did not like it, not even a little bit. So, um, 
yeah, I do think like a short row heel is going to be my go-to heel when it comes to knitting color work or something where I can't do a heel flap and gusset um, and then the toe, I'll always do my normal toe. No need to do any other toe. <laughs> okay, let me know what you think of this project down below. Are you as happy as I am that it is finally off the needles? Yay. So good. So good. This is how I store my socks. Like this. I put it in a box. I'll show you the box, actually. Okay, hello. Uh, Jane from the future because I forgot to show you um, when I recorded, but I have been kind of trying to figure out a better organization system for my socks because currently they're in um, these like bins from Target, but I feel like this is not big enough, so maybe the solution is just to get a bigger bin. Well, I guess I don't have an issue really, except like I don't have enough because I brought more socks um, like he like here up to school with me when I went home to visit my family. Um, so I don't have enough space <laughs> to like, uh, like neatly, um, to neatly store my hand knit socks and my uh, store-bought socks so sorry some of my socks like I wear I don't wash socks like every time I wear them so uh, some of them are a little bit like I kind of like keep them like this like throw them on top to like air dry a bit before I fold them back and stuff them into storage <laughs> so some of them are a little bit you know silly looking so i'm just getting that organized right now before i show you <laughs> before i show off my socks but okay so i already showed this one but as you can see like i keep my um like store-bought socks here but I have like so many more that are just like in my closet um but like I said I just fold them up like so and uh store them like this so I can see everyone I'm pretty sure this is every pair of sock socks I own every pair that I've made um so that's really exciting uh this is not a pair of socks. These are my fingerless gloves that I made a couple years ago now from Noro Silk Garden, Noro Garden Silk. And they're really cute. And this was like very early in my podcasting days. But yeah, I, I still wear these, especially now since it's gotten cold in the bay. Um, I, I pull these out more often. Um, but yeah, was I going to say anything else about these? I don't think so. Let me see. But yeah, besides for those, everything else is a pair of socks. And I'm really happy with my sock collection. I guess I've made more than these, um, but I've uh, gifted them, so like... My sister has one, I think my mom has a pair, and uh, William has two pairs, so. Okay, um, should we do a thing where I show you which ones I made first? My very first pair of socks aren't here because <laughs> I knit them twisted, and so, oh, I think my sister has two pairs then. Yeah, so my some of my early pairs are not here, but I can um, tell you, I guess. Okay. So, <laughs> it's a little bit hard. Okay, so this is one of my very first pairs of socks. 
and it's still my like one of my favorites um this and then I think I knit this is pretty early in my sock journey this is pretty early like okay in my first year of socks I would say it's this pair this pair this pair this pair this pair and then everything else came um, later a lot of my early socks are not are not here but this is like probably my most worn pair of socks and recently I've been wearing this too this is cascade yarns so I really like that and this pair I wear a lot as well but oh and this pair I wear a lot Oh, the purple. This is purple. Right here. These pairs are one of my earliest. I wear this all the time. So, this is my sock collection. My next finished object is... Alright! Yay! It's the blouse number one. But my favorite things knitwear. It is done. Done and dusted off the needles. And I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm not obsessed with it, but it's good and I will wear it. So I think that is a net positive, but I am, I'm just not like 100% satisfied with the fit, but I knew, I knew I would feel this way, but I did not change what I was doing, so. Um, I did not run out of yarn. I did win yarn chicken, so that is really good news. Yeah, I won yarn chicken, so that's really good news. Let me try it on for you. And in the meantime, oh my gosh, my nails. I did this hand myself, and my sister helped me with this hand. Like she did, like yeah, I guess she did this hand. <laughs> but isn't that so? Awesome, so amazing, so amazing. I hope they last, but yeah. I, okay, if you know, this is a tangent, sorry. You see how this is like a swirly, and then this, you may or may not be able to see a star pattern. I wanted the chrome to just stick to the star and the swirly, but I, it like latched on to the rest of the nail I'm not sure how to fix that, especially because, okay, what I did do is, for the star I didn't do this, but for the swirly I did, I, well actually yes, the star I did do this. So I painted a matte top coat, cured it, did a glossy top coat in the design I wanted, cured it, and then I put on the chrome powder, and I thought that was supposed to make it only stick to the glossy top coat but it spread everywhere so I'm like I don't understand does my application just do I actually need to have a precise application of the chrome like I can't just rub it everywhere and like it not get on the nail but I've seen videos like on Instagram reels where it doesn't get on the rest of the nail so I'm a little bit confused but so if you know if you're a nail girly if you're a nail tech and you can tell me what I'm doing wrong I would love that but yeah, I really love my nails and I hope they last a long time and they were really fun to um, do. Yeah, I like them. I like them. Okay, so I I'll try this on for you. I knit a size medium. I think I knit a size medium and that's why I'm unhappy. Oh, this sweater I'm wearing, by the way, is a Zara sweater. I don't know if I've worn it on the pod before. 
I don't want to take off the orange, so it might look a little weird. Everything is heavily cropped because I was very close to losing your chicken. Okay, I think I do have to take off the orange because that looks really weird. You can imagine, you can imagine. Yeah, so... Overall, I like it. Uh, like, overall I like it, but I would size down if I knit it next time. And then if I bought the correct yarn, I would have made the, I don't know, because I really do like this sleeve length because I don't have to push it up. Like it's like at a good like working length, but at the same time, uh, I think maybe the vibe would have been better if it was longer, but overall, I like this. It's not bad, and uh, yeah, I like the drape of it. Overall, it's good, but again, if I had sized down, I think the neckline would have been less wide. I don't mind the white neckline, but I just don't think it's like proportional to my body, if that makes sense. I really do think I knit a size too big, so now we know. Okay, so this is my second finished object. My third finished object I don't have with me because I am, I sent it off. I sent it off to William and he opened it yesterday for Valentine's Day. So yes, they were, um blue vanilla socks that you've seen for a long time but they were complete but um yeah I'm I was super happy to get that off the needles I'd been working on that for a pretty long time as well so I'm I'm happy that's off so then that meant that I had zero whips on the needle and that just felt so amazing so awesome um and that was maybe like a week or two weeks ago yeah about two weeks ago that happened so i was pretty stoked i started um a uh what is this? the ingrid i started an ingrid sweater so let me show you my progress let me show i have quite a bit of progress as you might be able to see Okay, let's see. So, I have finished the first part of the back panel, and I've done the first part of the left shoulder, and right now I'm working on the right shoulder. Cool, right? Super cool. Um, I did size down because uh, I felt like my for the needle size because I felt like my uh, gauge swatch was a little bit more loose than I wanted so I sized down a needle size and um, I haven't checked if I'm hitting actually I don't think I checked to see if I hit gauge for my gauge swatch it was more of a visual thing like do I like how this looks um but yeah this is my progress I'm pretty happy with it I do think, I know I was worried about like how how it would look on me, but I'm like, I think it'll look good. I think it'll look good. Oh, also with the nails made me recognize, realize that I think I'm a silver person. I don't know. I do think I look good in gold, but I tend to not like silver, but with the nails, I'm like, oh, maybe I do like silver. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I think for my birthday, I'm going to treat myself to some silver earrings. So if you have recommendations for a nice place to get jewelry, I don't know. I don't. I haven't like looked into it, but I want something that's like real, <laughs> like solid, because I think these are solid gold. And it's just nice because I don't have to like take them, take them off to shower but does silver tarnish no matter what i don't know i have to look into that because i just don't want to deal with like the tarnishing and having to like 
remove stuff because um, when things are like silver plated or gold plated it just never lasts for me and I just am disappointed so yeah maybe I'll do like a stainless steel so the look is like silver but it's like I don't have to pay for silver I don't know if you know let me know but yeah okay anyway so this is my Ingrid progress I'm really happy with um it so far honestly I, w I was gonna say I'm not very happy with it so far but looking at it <laughs> looking at it on the camera pretty impressed with what it looks like I am knitting size small I was gonna knit a size medium but when I was reading the pattern over and she was like explaining how to pick your size just to account for all the ease her example measurement her sample measurement like oh well for example if you are x centimeters you should pick this size like that sample that example was my exact measurement so and it I think it was like so I think I'm in between like a small and a medium and I was gonna size up to a medium but because the recommendation she said was to do the small I ended up doing the small and I do think that's the right choice <laughs> so that's good that I read the pattern but yeah I'm excited for this I think it's gonna look good and um I do think this color will be good on me right right um what I do want to say is everyone says how fast it is how fun it is to knit I was not feeling that at all especially with the moss stitch the moss stitch will be the bane of my existence I hate the moss stitch I don't like the X's either they're cool like as I'm working and I'm like whoa it's like happening but I don't like the moss stitch or the the, the mock cables the X's what I do like is the ribbing the ribbing was like so good like the ribbing was so fun I love I loved the ribbing so I don't know I guess that's me learning about myself I suppose but I really I loved loved the ribbing so yeah I don't know it's not as potato chippy as a pattern as I expected or was led to believe but it's still a good, still a fun knit, but I, I don't know. It's not like, it's not like super addicting. Like can't wait for the next section, but maybe that's just cause I'm knitting back and forth now. Like, I don't know, like will the sleeves go faster? I have heard the X's on the sleeves are gonna be a nightmare for the decreases cause it's not written into the chart. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see when we get there. But yeah. I am getting a little bit worried about how much yarn I have. I believe I have seven balls of yarn. And I am on my second, my second skein already. Uh, so before I even finished the back panel, I had to uh, add in a new skein. So this is already over one skein. I have seven skeins of the yarn so I'm just like do I have enough yarn I don't know it's a commercial yarn so I'm hoping like there's not gonna be that much variation between dye lots if I do need to get more this is patents wool worsted so that is my hope I hope that you are hoping that for me as well <laughs> but this is my little Ingrid sweater. I'm pretty happy with it, um, but it's not as like addicting and potato chippy as everyone says it is. And it was actually quite a slog uh, uh, sometimes. So be warned, be warned. It is living in my, I think this is Neighborhood Fiber Co. I'm not sure. My com community come unity back. Okay, cool. All right, my last whip is also a new cast on, obviously, from this yarn. 
if you remember, if you've been here for a while, you might remember that I was going to save this yarn to knit a long sleeve sweater, I guess, but it like, this is fingering weight, so it would have been more just like a long sleeve shirt, um, but I did not, I was just like wanting to, well, I needed to knit on a vanilla sock because uh, I had classes coming up and I was like, I'm not going to be caught dead in these lectures with out a sock project so i cast it on and here is my progress wow that's pretty awesome so this is my sock progress this is my new favorite stitch marker row counter whatever it's called mark stitch marker i don't know what it's called Okay, here it is. I really like it so far. I like the fabric. I'm knitting these with US size zero, zero, yeah, US size zero, so two millimeter, uh, nine inch circulars, uh, using the DPNs for the heel flap and just the heel flap, I guess, for the gusset. I'll go back to the circulars. But wow, that's amazing. Um, I just love the colors, all the yarn together. I do think it would have looked really good in that, like, tea, not tea, long sleeve shirt situation, but I do think it was the right decision to make these into socks because I'm having a lot of uh, fun with them. They're easy, mindless, and um, it's just been really enjoyable. So I really uh, have been liking the, the project so far. So yeah, that's my latest whip. And that's about all that's on my needles. Only two projects. Um for Valentine's Day slash our anniversary anniversary, William got me. Tiffins. I was saying I was going to buy myself some sock blockers. Not sock blockers, sorry. Uh, just blocking pins. And I had met those like bigger ones. Like, you know how they. There's like a plastic bit and then there are pins. So they're together. So it's like. Like one blocking pin would have like three to six pins so that you didn't have to like individually pin things down. Um, but he did not understand, which is okay, because obviously I can still use these T-pins for a lot of different things. Um, but I'm also wondering, is there a way for me to turn these into those bigger blocking pins? There's gotta be, I feel like. So maybe I will ask him to do that for me. Like, I'm thinking if you cut up, like, acrylic and you, like, cut the grooves for the T-pin and then you could super glue the T-pins in a line and then, like, another piece of acrylic on top, like, that's a, a blocking pin. Is that right? I don't know. If you have ideas, let me know. But, yeah, how to convert T-pins into those, like, a bigger, bigger blocking pin. Yeah, okay. So that's an acquisition. And then something that isn't an acquisition, but I went home, looked through my yarn stash. I went home for Vietnamese New Year and looked through my yarn stash to see if there was anything I wanted to bring up uh, with me so I can knit on it. And I saw this. I saw this, which William's mom got me I don't remember exactly when, but it's a Miss Babs Yummy 2 ply. And I felt like these colors reminded me of these colors. It has more orange, I guess. But I do think... I do think they could work together. in some capacity, maybe? I don't know, so I just brought that up. 
Again, if you have ideas for this or this, let me know. Let me know. Yeah, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure if I... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't want to do a shawl because I, I know I wouldn't get a lot of use out of a, sh a shawl. And I have enough, like, scarves and shawls and things. Maybe I will make a scarf. I, I'm scared that I will be too bored. But I... Mm, yeah, I'm just scared a scarf project is not going to be, like, engaging enough for me to work on. Is it like this? How does the gradient work? B, A, A, B, yeah. So I do think it's like this. Yeah, because I'm thinking of like a striped big scarf. I'm also like, when would I finish that? But if I did do that, I would hold the yarn double. So that might help it go faster so maybe i would like it i don't know it's hard i'm not quite sure what to do with the yarn i think a sweater is ideal but i'm not sure if this is enough for a sweater 38 grams each so that means like 40 times 6 is 240 minus 12. Okay, so I mean, okay, so it's over 200 grams. Let's just say 450. This is 450 grams of yarn, and is that enough? Okay, even if we get this, so 450. plus 100, so 550. 550 grams of fingering weight yarn, is that enough to make a sweater? Calculations, calculations, I don't know, but thought I would bring that in again in case anyone had suggestions for what I could do with, I wanna incorporate it all into one project, which is the hard part because I think if I was willing to split it up, it would be a bit easier to find things, but I want to try to incorporate them all into one project if possible, so I'm just, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm also thinking, like, I don't know. I've never done marling before. Mm. Mm. I guess there's two ways to marl, right? There's marling where you, like, hold two yarns together, two different colors together. But then isn't there also marling where it's like striping but like grading Gr like or is that not marling is marling holding two different yarns okay i think marling is only holding two different yarns together i so i guess i'm thinking of like fading i just don't know if i could do a fade some sort of like obviously it is a fade set but you would still have to like blend the yarn like, I wouldn't go from yarn A to yarn B. I would go, like, two rows of A, two rows of B, two a rows of A, two rows of B, one row of A, one row of B, and then eventually only B. I don't know. It's it's causing a lot of uh, brain thinking power. But I think I'm just going to focus on the Ingrid sweater for now and these uh, socks and then I'll figure out what next. I do want to make some sort of vest, sweater vest, in the near future. So that is on my mind. Um, but yeah, I think. Um, in terms, so if you are here just for the yarn, me goodness, um, thank you for joining. I hope you liked the video and hearing what I'm up to. Feel free to let me know what you're up to down in the comments. Um, if you like the video, please give it a like and please subscribe and consider hitting the bell button so you can know when I post. It's pretty 
and not pretty irregular it's a little bit irregular so um if you do hit the bell you will be notified when i do post so i appreciate you being here and watching now i'm gonna go into like the uh what i've been watching reading segment uh so yeah when I'm reading, last time I told you about Worn, A People's History of Clothing, and I'm not sure if I had finished it at that point, but now I am finished with it. I think I was pretty close to done um, last time I talked to you, so I, I don't think I have anything else to add. Currently, I'm listening to Unraveled. Let me see what the full title is. It's by Peggy something something. Orenstein. Oh, it's called Unraveling. What I learned about life while shearing sheep, dyeing wool, and making the world's ugliest sweater. So it's like, I think um, the premise is she, it was like COVID and then she wanted to learn how to like spin and shear sheep and she's a knitter. So uh, it's kind of like a reflection and a little bit of a history on raising sheep and collecting wool and making and, and doing that so so yeah so I, I'm enjoying that so far and she is based in the Bay Area and I'm in the Bay Area so it's um interesting to uh I don't know hear about the Bay Area in terms of like sh sheep farm and things like that um and this book talks a lot more about wool than the other book does the other book kind of talked about the impact of wool but maybe I just like wasn't listening um but I didn't hear too much about like the history of wool but uh this book does talk a lot more about the history of wool especially wool in the U.S. and um yeah and that kind of thing so it's been uh, an interesting listen interesting read so far and um, something else I'm reading is a book that William's mom sent me and it is called Bellwether by Connie Willis. And it's really good so far. I think I'm only like, yeah, maybe like two or three chapters. In, yeah, I'm two chapters into it. <laughs> but it's really good so far. Um, it's about these two people, this one lady who studies like trends and this one guy who is a chaos theorist and they do like a joint study together and they study sheep. Um, so it's not sheep and maybe maybe and i feel like maybe that is a little bit knitting related because we are knitting with the sheep's wool so yeah uh good so far i enjoy it and yeah that's that um what i've been watching we finished watching percy jackson and it was good i think i don't know it was good it was good it was like nostalgic mostly um, we started and finished Tasman Hotel, which we did enjoy. I do like a lot of the songs, but I'm not like obsessed with it. I don't love it, but it was good. Yeah. I, yeah, it was good. It was good. And I don't like how really likes it. So, <laughs> and she recommended it to me, but yeah, I don't know. It was good. It wasn't like amazing, but it was pretty good. And I, I do like the songs. Um, okay, and we just started watching Echo last night, um, which is on Disney Plus. is a deaf, like, amputee Native American villain. I think she is a villain. I don't know. She's a bad guy. <laughs> She's in, like, she, like, works for Kingpin, uh, who's in, like, the Daredevil universe, maybe. It's Marvel. It's all connected, right? I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, I like it. I really like it so far, actually. And sometimes it doesn't really make sense, but I do really like it. Um, and I think that's it in terms of what we've been watching recently. Love is Blind came out yesterday, but I haven't seen it yet. My housemates and I are going to watch it maybe this weekend, hopefully this weekend. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm excited to watch with them. And... I think that's it. I think that's all I had to share. Thanks so much for joining and listening. Tell me what you think of what I've been making. 
and yeah i hope you're having a good week and i hope to uh catch you in the next podcast episode in the meantime happy knitting bye